All right, so in the past few videos, uh, we've been here at the home of George Washington in Mount Vernon. We've been going through the, the mansion and exploring the grounds here, looking at the story of the enslaved people who lived at Mount Vernon. But now we're headed to the museum that is on site where they have a lot of artifacts related to uh, George Washington and the, uh, the Washington family. And we're also going to be visiting the final resting place of our very first president. All right, so we just got into the museum here at Mount Vernon. And uh, this exhibit kind of takes you through the life of George Washington. I don't know what to expect, so we're gonna kind of go through here and uh, see what we can learn. So there's something that I wanted to show real quick that is simply amazing. Uh, really everything that we see here at Mount Vernon is courtesy of the Mount Vernon Ladies Association. Um, so if you look, they have some pictures here of what Mount Vernon used to look like. Like those are ship masts that are holding the structure together. Uh, and then if you go over here, here's another picture of what Mount Vernon looked like at one point. So we almost lost this historic structure. Uh, but thanks to the Mount Vernon Ladies Association, um, restoration work was done and, and continues even to this day. Here's something else that's kind of cool that I didn't know. Uh, Thomas Edison designed and installed Mount Vernon's first electrical system in 1916. So that's kind of cool. Just learning all kinds of neat things here today. So they start off talking about George Washington's career as a surveyor and um, they have you know some of these wax figures uh, which by the way were done by the same people who did the Madame Tussauds uh, wax figures. Uh, so here it's showing George Washington as a younger man and uh, working his surveying equipment and if you look over here well, these are George Washington's surveying chains and also tripods. So this was all of the, the gear that belonged to George Washington. Moving on, they have a display talking about George Washington and his role in the French and Indian War. And they, they asked the question, uh, who started the French and Indian War? Well, the answer uh, yeah, is pretty much George Washington. Another key moment during the French and Indian War that involved George Washington was the battle at Fort Necessity. And here they have a crossbeam that was said to be a part of Fort Necessity. Very interesting. One thing that's really cool about this museum is they have a lot of original artifacts that belong to George Washington, uh, including the 1753 silver-hilted small sword that belonged to Washington. Uh, we've got this whenever he was 21 years old, and uh, it's believed that he carried it during the French and Indian War. Wow. George Washington belonged to a secret society known as the Freemasons and uh, these are just some objects that are associated with the Masons. Uh, so you have like this hourglass that was used during lodge meetings, um, punch bowl, yeah interesting. I like this painting. This kind of jumped out at me whenever I came around the corner. This shows Mount Vernon in process. So, so we know Mount Vernon, you know, the finished product. Uh, this is what it may have looked like as it was being built. Well, as we are moving through, we are getting into the part of Washington's life that he is very well known for, 
and that is the leadership that he provided during the American Revolution. So they have, I, I like how they have a bunch of interactive pieces in this museum that make you think. It's not just reading, but here, you know, they're asking, you know, would you want to be commander in chief of the Continental Army? Uh, and, and it helps people to kind of get into the mind of George Washington and realize the challenges that he was up against. Here's another wax figure of George Washington at age 45, which is how he would have looked during the American Revolution. And it would be very easy just to kind of pass by this and look, but once you know the story behind how they made this, it really gives you a greater appreciation for it. They actually went and got the waistcoat and breeches of Washington from the Smithsonian, took measurements, that way they could get like the proper height. Uh, they also took samples of hair from that time to get the hair color right. Yeah, pretty, pretty fascinating. There's a famous story towards the end of the war where uh, George Washington is giving a speech and he pauses and he pulls out a pair of spectacles and says, gentlemen, you must pardon me for I have not only grown gray, but almost blind in service to my country. And uh, the kind of... The, the idea of the shared sacrifices made the soldiers weep openly. Now, we don't know for sure if these are the eyeglasses that he used, uh, but they are a pair of eyeglasses that belong to George Washington. So these could have been it, but we don't know for sure. Okay, I just learned something. Uh, if you want to hear more about those spectacles, there's a podcast called Curator's Choice, uh, where one of the staff members from here at Mount Vernon talked about that exact museum piece. So definitely something to check out. Now after the Revolutionary War, Washington went back to the lifestyle that he probably identified with the most and that was the lifestyle of a farmer. So, so this exhibit, and again you can come to Mount Vernon and see more of this stuff in depth and, and really kind of immerse yourself in the history, uh, but it's talking about you know Washington's farming operations at Mount Vernon and here's something that I did not know is that Washington started a whiskey distillery and became the largest distiller in America. Yeah, always learning something. Again, I like how they're telling the, the full story of George Washington and Mount Vernon. And uh, this is talking about Washington's role as a slaveholder. Uh, something that as he got older, he became increasingly more uncomfortable with and, and his attitudes on slavery kind of evolved. So you can see here a quote where he says, there is not a man living who wishes more sincerely than I do to see a plan adopted for the abolition of it. And here are a collection of tools that came from Mount Vernon that the enslaved people of Washington would have used. You can go around here to the other side and see a little bit more. So this thing right here, get this, that's a uh, that's an 18th century waffle iron. <laughs> Pretty cool. I love looking at these old tools and just learning how how people lived, you know, centuries ago. And then this is really interesting to me. These are the food rations for a day for the enslaved people. So that's how much cornmeal they would be allotted and how much fish they would be allotted. And then each year George Washington would uh, provide his slaves with, uh, well, like one jacket, uh, two pairs of pants, two shirts, one pair of stockings, one pair of shoes. That's what they would get for the year. So definitely a, a different time and uh, Washington was, was right there um, I guess you could kind of say in, in a period of evolution in human thought regarding slavery. Now here's one thing about Washington that I really didn't know is just all of the business dealings that he was involved in. So here's a depiction of a grist mill that he owned. And uh, of course Mount Vernon is right on the Potomac. So uh, he also was in the fishing business. Uh, they would have big old nets uh, about 450 feet wide and 8 to 10 feet deep that would catch shad and herring coming up the Potomac. And look at there, 1.5 million herring caught in seven weeks. That is a lot of fish. 
Now, not everything that Washington touched turned to gold. As a matter of fact, he had a lot of failures in his life, including in business, one of which was the building of a canal along the Potomac River to uh, fuel westward expansion. Yeah, and apparently you can still see the remains of this canal today. I'll have to check that out. Okay, now I go to a lot of museums and see a lot of historical artifacts. Uh, there are a few that I have seen that surpass what they have right here in the museum. Look at that. These are the actual dentures of George Washington. Now, George Washington did brush his teeth regularly, but um, by the time he was 57, taking off as president, he uh, was wearing a full set of dentures. Now, they're not made of wood, contrary to popular belief, uh, but rather out of cow teeth and human teeth and elephant ivory, which is kind of crazy. But man, that is so cool. Here are another one of these wax figures that are just so well done. This one showing Washington taking the oath of office. And uh, here you see a, a quote from George Washington that I think still applies today. It says that the government, though not absolutely perfect, is one of the best in the world, I have little doubt. Now, as you're moving into the section on Washington's presidency, we're not going to go through every single thing, but they talk about some of the key pieces of legislation and key policies that that Washington had, uh, including, you know, one with westward expansion. So here they have an artifact uh, showing one of the first peace medals that were issued to the Native American tribes, um, basically trying to curry the favor of the Native Americans who had previously worked uh, with the British. But, uh, but yeah, you can, you can learn a lot about Washington's presidency here in this exhibit. George Washington is the only president to have not resided in the White House because there wasn't a White House yet, but he did oversee the planning of Washington, D.C. with uh, Chief Architect Pierre Lafont. Uh, so they created this plan for Washington City, or the, what we now know as Washington, D.C., uh, in, in 1793 for a permanent capital, the center point, which is right there at uh, the Capitol building. And kind of rounding out George Washington's story, we get to his final hours and death. So here they, they talk about what led to the death of George Washington. Uh, so in, in short, he was 67 years old at the time and on December 12th had gone out in uh, kind of a wintry mix of snow and sleet and cold winds and uh, kind of caught cold, wasn't feeling well. And uh, over the next few days, things did not go well for George Washington. And you can see some artifacts that they have in here. Um, there's like a watch that was owned by one of the doctors who attended to Washington on his deathbed. Uh, they also have, you can see there in the middle, it's a little bit dark, uh, a thumb lancet that was used for bloodletting. So they were puncturing his veins and letting blood out, which was a common medical practice at the time that they thought worked, uh, to try and get him healed up and get him back into shape. Well on December 14th of 1799 uh, George Washington passes away and uh, physicians today speculate that it was a bacterial infection called epiglottitis that that just slowly suffocated him and then here is a replica of the casket that would have held the remains of George Washington After the death of George Washington, he uh, was laid to rest here at Mount Vernon in the family tomb. And uh, he, he left instructions for a new tomb to be built because he said 
the old tomb was improperly situated. It was too close to the banks of the Potomac and he was afraid that erosion would cause it to collapse at some point. So anyway, we're heading to the grave of George Washington, but first I wanted to show the old tomb. And here is the original vault that held the remains of George Washington. So you can look out and see how it uh, overlooks the, the Potomac River here. Uh, the remains of George Washington were here until 1831, uh, whenever they were moved to the new tomb, which is just a short walk away. Now, there's this interesting little tidbit about Washington that some people may be unaware of. Uh, after his death, there was this movement amongst a bunch of politicians to have his body interred in a vault right beneath the Capitol, which is situated at the exact center of Washington, D.C. Well, Washington had wanted to be buried here at Mount Vernon, so Martha was very resistant to that and, and wouldn't allow it to happen. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're approaching the, the final resting place of Washington right now. Well, here we are looking at the final resting place of George Washington. And up here on this stone are etched the words, uh, within this enclosure rest the remains of General George Washington. So of course we have the American flag on the left and then the commander in chief flag on the right. And if we approach, well, in the sarcophagus here on the right is George Washington. And then over here on the left is Martha Washington. Huh. Alright, so that was the final resting place of George Washington. Uh, I've, I've made it known on here that uh, one of my goals is to, to visit the, the graves of every president and uh, that, that is one that I've wanted to, to visit and, and pay my respects to for a long time. But uh, anyway, uh, we have thoroughly enjoyed our time here at Mount Vernon. If you ever decide to visit, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give some advice. Take an entire day. Uh, and as I've mentioned on previous videos, there's so much to see and so much to learn here. You can also go to the YouTube channel for Mount Vernon uh, and also go to their website. They have a, a ton of great resources. Uh, but as for now, we are heading off to the next place.